moving on, what? now that we've saved that poor baby from continuing the Shakita Banana look. <laughs> oh, God. Here's another one. They always look they haven't gotten a drop of sun in like a decade. Right? You can just see the veins in there. Like, not that pale can't be beautiful. Because it can. But it's when it's because that's your real skin tone and not... I haven't been outside in a decade, but let me tell you about the world and how it should work, even though I haven't been in the world for a decade, right? Parts preferences are transphobic because attraction is not based on what parts you have. Oh, another one of these diddlers. Let's see. Parts preferences are transphobic because attraction is not based on what parts you have. We all feel attraction well before we know what parts someone has. You're not going around asking Tinder matches what parts they have. Also, I find parts preferences are transphobic because most people assume that a certain type of smex has to be happening with certain parts. You're like, oh, I- Shut the fuck up. First of all, I think a lot of people- are asking people on dating apps what they have in their pants because of the current year we're in. Second of all, maybe for you, attraction isn't based on parts. Guess what? I like dick. I like it like that. And when I say dick, I mean the kind that you're born with. Babe, not the kind that you like cut a chunk off your leg and then attach it. I'm like, no, right? And there's no disrespect that if you've gotten that surgery and you're happy, that doesn't mean I want it in me or around me. I'm here for dick. Penis. And you could look like the hottest man on the planet. You tell me you have some mouse down there. I'm going to go into a deep depression, first of all. But second of all, that would instantly deplete my attraction to you by at least 95%. By at least. I could still appreciate that you're, everything else looks awesome. But that doesn't mean I want to eat it. <laughs> that doesn't mean I want to eat what you have. And the gag is there's plenty of people that do want to eat what you have. So keep it pushing, right? There's plenty of people that want everything I have and I go with those people right I don't try to convince people who don't want anything and everything I have to want what I have because that's demented that's not how sexuality works and y'all are so capable of understanding this spectrum this wide variety of sexualities y'all are so nuanced in your thinking and I use that word lightly thinking that you can differentiate between pansexual and bisexual even though they're functionally the same exact thing Demi boy, demi girl, astrosexual, gynosexual. Like, you can understand all those nuanced sexualities, but you can't fathom that someone might have a sexuality based on them liking dick. That's just too far, right? That's just like, doesn't make any sense, right? I like dick. And that's not going to change. Not for you. Or anyone you roll with. So go away. So demented. So demented. Yes, yeah, some people have preferences. My God. Trans activist tells people on TikTok to just lie about having gender dysphoria in order to get on cross-sex hormones. Oh my God. Is this who we are? Is this what we represent? Do we even watch the video? Because I'm already feeling things just begin to shut down within my nervous system by reading the description with that blunt bang. That blunt bang. You're not giving doll. You want the doll bangs without being the doll. Make that make sense, right? I want to talk about lies. Somebody lied to you and told you that blunt bang was working for you. Somebody lied to you. Several times. Might be a daunting task, but getting on HRT is rather easy. Only testosterone is a controlled substance. Meaning, you just gotta go to an informed consent clinic to get HRT. You only need four things to get care from one of these clinics. 
be 18, be able to consent, show that you have gender dysphoria. If you don't have gender dysphoria, uh, just lie about it. Y'all hear the voice change? If you don't have HRT, just lie about it. Really? Really? Zimzer said that with all Zimzer's chest. People love to tell on themselves, yes, that's what that is. So you got all these lies going on in your life. So when you talk about lying, your voice goes like this. Anyways, this is why I say they will literally admit to things and then deny that it's happening. So apparently it's this crazy process to get on HRT and there are so many hoops to jump through and it's, you know, there's no detransitioners because who could ever make it through all this psychological testing, but you can just lie about having gender dysphoria. I mean, how irres irresponsible is an understatement? Like I feel stupid even using that word, how disgusting, how damaging, damage like, that blunt bang, would you cut it with like kitchen scissors? Like, what, I don't understand. You're a problem. You're a roach in the house of trans. So you have trans and then you have these little roaches that scurry in. And you flip the light on and they scurry. But as long as it's just dim enough, they can get by doing shit like this. Talking about just lie about it. Why do you want people who don't have gender dysphoria to transition at all, but then have the nerve to say, no one's going to detransition? I would think if you don't have dysphoria, you're going to end up tra detransitioning because why the fuck are you transitioning in the first place? With that blunt bang. My God. So, but watch, I'm talking blunt about the blunt bang and I'm going to be the problem. Because I'm blunt with actually like truth and this person is just blunt with an ugly ass bang. They're going to be seen as a good person and I'm over here the big bad wolf bully ass bitch. No. This is the bully. Worse than bully. This is the psychopath. Right? That is causing who knows how much harm in people's lives spreading this the statement that you can just or you should just go lie about a mental condition about a health condition a mental condition and get treatment for it. Insert trans with any other condition, right? If you want to get on Adderall, but you don't have ADHD, just lie about it. So you would see that's a, a piece of shit person, right? You look at that person and be like, wow, what a piece of shit. Taking away medication from people who need it just to be a druggie. You're doing more than just taking away medication for people who actually need it. Because estradiol isn't just taken by only trans people, by the way. It's menopausal women. It's women with, you know, a deficiency. So that's part one. And part two is you're causing irreparable harm to the trans community. So we're going to reframe that this person is somehow not a piece of shit, right? And just acknowledge that that's the truth about who and what they are. And there's really no nuance to withhold for that. I mean, it's just like, it is what it is. And the fact that they said, step two, be able to consent. What do you think the word consent means? Be specific, blunt bang. Be specific. Because I don't think it means what you think it means. Right? Just like that. Blonde bang isn't giving what you think it gives. What you're saying isn't giving what you think you're saying. Dementia, just lie about it. Just lie about a very serious and debilitating health condition. But no, we're not making a mockery out of the trans community. Blair White's the problem. You know, one day I'm just gonna snap. <laughs> and that's what they want. They want me to snap. But one thing about it, any time in my life that I've snapped, I've snapped right back in the sense of I become so much stronger, so much more capable 
of shutting you hoes down. So keep pushing me to snap and see what happens. With that blunt bang. All right, this person thinks that they are proving that trans people are valid by talking about a trans cult that used to exist. Because that's going to make sense. Okay. Trans people were actually priests. The Gali were a group of priests in ancient Rome dating back as early as 5000 BC who worshipped the goddess Cybele. The priests were assigned male at birth. However, upon initiation into Cybele's cult, they would castrate themselves. Now I know what you're thinking. Just because they castrated themselves doesn't mean they were transgender. But the Gali didn't stop there. They would wear women's clothing, women's jewelry, and even ask to be referred to with feminine pronouns. Which makes the Gali some of the earliest examples of people who both medically and socially transition. Unfortunately, with these early examples of trans people come early examples of transphobia and the Gali were often ridiculed in Roman culture, especially in their later years when Christianity was becoming more popular. Hmm, sounds familiar. Regardless, the existence of the Gali is proof that as long as humans have been here, trans people have been here too. So, one way to sort of validate trans people that isn't harping on an old cult of men that cut their dicks off it's probably to not use that as an example, right? Not the best example. Not the best example. Oh, there was a group of demented ass priests that castrated each other back in the day. So that means you are somehow valid. First of all, y'all need to stop seeking external validation in general. Right? So that's the first thing. But if you are going to seek external validation, validation, maybe not from a cult from ancient times of men who cut each other's wieners off, right? I mean, that's just, I mean, wow. If that's what you see yourself in, right? You read that and you're like, oh my God, I feel seen. My God, I wanna hide. You feel seen and I wanna hide. So you're feeling like that reflects who you are. An ancient cult of priests who castrate each other. No, thank you. No, thank you. And again, we do know that trans people have always existed. We do know, you know, in whatever iteration during that time period they were able to, obviously, like, all of this is something that is cap is able to happen in modern times, everything I've done. But again, there's just going to be a million better examples than a group of demented ass, weird ass priests that cut each other's wieners off. I mean, that's just gross. Like, ew. Speaking of gross, y'all remember the, um, that demon from the last episode who was talking about wear a mask where you're a white supremacist? Well, she's back. She's on the scene with the gangster lean, and she has some words, and she wants you to hear them. So let's go. There seems to be a lot of confusion about what it means to be transgender and what it means to be non-binary. Non-binary is a transgender identity. It's not something different. It's just a category of. Think about it like the animal kingdom. If you look at the classification of birds, there are thousands of different kinds of birds and different species and different things that they do. So, request denied. No, we're going to gatekeep. There's another word y'all act like as a bad word. Every healthy group and or society, organization, business, home, club, gatekeeps. It's kind of how you keep freaks from getting in. How you keep infiltrators from getting in. How you keep people from getting in. They're going to derail the shit and make it look like that. <laughs> Heifer. That was just on the screen. No, you are not trans because you are non-binary, right? It's just, it's just not. Again, y'all have all these different words, labels. Y'all are so nuanced in your thinking. Pansexual, if you tell one of these people, one of these people, that pansexual is the same thing as bisexual, I guarantee you they will respond 
with the fury of a thousand suns that you are either erasing bisexual people or erasing pansexual people and they will be offended that you dare to draw similarities between two things that functionally exist in the world as the exact same thing. And y'all can be so mad about that. Pan and bi, yeah, they may have subtle differences in definition, right? How a pan and bi person functions in the real life is going to be the same, right? You're attracted to all of the two sexes, right? So you can see the nuance in that. But God forbid I sit up here and say non-binary is very different than what I am. Like a woman who has never transitioned is different than a man who has transitions. Like those are actually the exact opposite things. So it's not as if we're splitting hairs here. Like those are, you know, world one, world two. The two don't really, they don't really collide. We can be friends. If you drop, if you drop the psychobabble commie act, and maybe you can be a good example of a non-binary person who can teach me to love y'all. I would like to see it. But as of right now, you're just pissing me off. Right? You're not trans. No, no. It's not happening. There are many important conversations happening about trans people right now that are being derailed by medical medical condition appropriators like you. It's kind of like, you know, people with cancer, right? Extreme comparison, but stick with me. It's kind of like people with cancer having conversations about how to treat their cancer, how to live with their cancer, how to be happy in life despite the fact they have cancer. And then someone who doesn't have cancer walks in and says, Here how y'all, here's how y'all are really going to talk about it. Here's what's really going down. I'm one of you and I'm making up a whole new set of rules for how you see yourself and how you're allowed to talk about yourselves. Request denied. Baby girl, baby boy, baby they. No, no, we're not the same. Never will be. And you should be happy about that because I know you hate me. Wokeness destroys the mind, body, and soul. That's the description of this. Let's see. Two things to know. I'm non-binary, I go by they, them. And I work in a store that is pretty much all women. So whenever they're like addressing us or when they're talking, they're always like, hey ladies. So I've taken it upon myself as someone that is non-binary to use this uh, to not listen. And whenever anyone addresses a group as ladies, I am not included. So when they say, hey ladies, let's like stop talking or hey ladies, let's like get to work. I will do none of it because you're not talking to me. You're not talking to me. You're not talking to me, so. Y'all remember that news story from the other week about how people don't hire non-binary people? You're why. You are why. You're the reason. Who would ever want someone like this working in their place of establishment where they're trying to do something as simple as call over a group of one or more people and they get purposely ignored because you're just so disgusted by the word ladies, by the fact that you're rolling up to work with a full face of makeup in your nicest pinstripe top, right? With that orange hair. In what world, going back to the last one, is this the same as me? In what world? This one? No. Not this one. Check the next one. Because it's not this one. All right, you guys. I love you. Make sure you guys subscribe to this podcast as well as my main channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.